So now this is the part where Gary Bell and I are going to try to paint you a picture about um, a worst case tolerance stack versus an RSS tolerance stack. Whereas with worst case, we are simply setting our tolerances to their maximum and their minimum conditions and checking where we're going to end up, checking what our maximum width is for our three blocks and minimum width is for our three blocks. Um, instead of the statistical analysis, we're going to model each component's variation as a statistical distribution. Um, this is typically a normal distribution by default, and these distributions combine to predict a new distribution that describes the assembly variation. It's not just giving us the extreme values of the variation anymore. Now, statistical analysis does carry some risk because by not looking at our worst moment for each of our parts, it is possible that we get several parts back that are all technically in spec at, a, at the part level, but at the assembly level, we can't put them together because we were designing for this statistical analysis. However, to do a worst case analysis, you're going to end up designing with incredibly tight part level tolerances, and a cheaper solution is to spot trends along the way using inspection data and using uh, general engineering wisdom. So what do I mean by this normal distribution across the uh, across the tolerance range other than a worst case. So if I'm looking at just this left block, so this is just the blue block, I've zoomed in on the upper right hand corner, and this would be my nine millimeter block, this would be my 10 millimeter block, and this would be my 11 millimeter block, and the block continues all the way out here. But this is just zoomed in on this one corner where that linear dimension is changing. When I apply a normal distribution to my tolerance, what I'm saying is that 0.13% of the time, all the way down here at this minimum value is where we're going to see 10 minus one millimeter. We're going to see a large number of our samples show up near nominal, and then all the way at our maximum, we're gonna once again see a very small number of samples show up at our 10 plus one millimeter range. So when you look at a uh, plus or minus three sigma, three standard deviations, we have 0.13% of our uh, crop is going to be below our minimum value and 0.13% of our crop is going to be above our maximum value. But we're saying that that's our process capability as our input. So if I input a normal distribution for block one, block two, and block three, and then I combine them, I'm gonna end up with a six sigma range of 4.88 millimeters, whereas that worst case range we found was plus or minus four millimeters or eight millimeters. So you can see that even with only three tolerances, if we were to design a worst case, we've almost doubled our overall range. Um, and the percent chance of a worst case happening based on our normal distribution input assumption would be 0.13% cubed because we're saying that 0.1% of the time it's ending up all the way out here at this tail. And that's going to happen 0.0022% of the time. So if you design a worst case, sure, all your assemblies are going together, but you're only getting that worst case assembly 0.0022% of the time. So you've increased your cost on every single one of your assemblies and every single one of your parts just to make sure that at the worst case, which is going to happen 0.0022% of the time, it'll still go together. Anything to add on this slide, Gary? Um, so, yeah, the only other thing would be, Spencer's defining the fact that with a normal distribution simulating your part tolerance, yep. your range could exceed the actual tolerance. That's the uh, plus or minus 0.13%. Mm -hmm. um, if you were having 100% inspection, you could truncate that yep. tolerance and then you would have nothing outside of the piece part tolerance range. Um, still, statistically adding them, the overall range is much smaller than the worst case range. So you could even start, um, you could design to a solution. If you didn't want your solution at plus or minus three sigma, you could design it to plus or minus four sigma going farther out and still be able to have 
larger tolerances and meet your specifications if that made sense then your you know then your assembly your assembly requirement if you went out to plus or minus four sigma now you're at you know 99.99 mm -hmm. something percent so yeah and then it, you know he's showing you that when you're adding multiple normal distributions your overall range is much smaller if you wanted to be more conservative you can make all your input distributions uniform yes and that will become a little bit more conservative, um, but it's still not going to add up to worst case. The central limit theorem still tells us that it would add up to a normal distribution or trend towards normal distribution Correct. as we did it. If you think about like rolling two dice, each die is a uniform distribution from one to six, but how often are you rolling twelves and twos? It's not very often. Right. Right. So I usually, you know, I would I usually try to say design to a normal curve plus or minus three sigma or plus or minus four sigma. And if you're, you know, still concerned, mm -hmm. change your input tolerances to uniform and design it to solve your results at that. You're still going to be able to hold larger tolerances and meet your requirement. All right. So now we're moving on to the geofactor analyzer worst case. This is the equation-based solution that 3DCS offers you to quickly report a worst case. So in the geofactor analyzer window, the estimated worst case you can turn on and it just looks like this column right here. You can, it can show up next to the Six Sigma column so you can have a clear comparison between your statistical range and your worst case range. 